Hi everyone, Paul Dombowski from Liberty Street Software. Subject of this video is Stamp Manager Deluxe 2016. The date is February 7, 2016, and we're good to go as far as releasing the new version. Uh, it's been pretty much done last week, but we've made, found a couple problems, small problems usually here or there, and we fixed those and uh, made some improvements to the manual, etc. But right now it should be good to go. So uh, in this video, we're going to um, uh, we're going to show what's new and um, quickly go over many of the features in the program. So hopefully people who've already used the software will uh, benefit as well. Um, so here's the main display. Now you can always change uh, the width and height of windows if you want to. You just go ahead and change it to your liking. A lot of, I've seen a lot of really nice large monitors these days. I don't actually want to go buy one. And so if you get a really large monitor, you can, there's no reason you can't make this program take up a much a lot more room be able to see uh all these columns at a time if you want to. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Now the program should remember any changes you make. So if you make the change to the width of a particular window, it should be remembered uh the next time you run the program. So uh, the column display here, if you don't like the width, you can just go ahead and manually change it. And that should also be remembered between sessions. So if you want to go ahead and make those bigger, uh, next time I run the program, they, that information, those widths should be remembered by the program. So uh, you can also change the columns using tools, preferences, columns. And that allows you to do that for whatever part of the set, uh, program you're actually looking at. Now, please uh, select Help. Stamp Manage videos uh, because we've done quite a few videos that are more specific on how to do things. For example, we just didn't want to have an inventory and album page. If you want to just inventory an entire album page and not have to go through every stamp on that page, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Um, editing multiple stamps at a time, uh, exporting, things like that. We've already covered those, so um, you can go back and check out the videos you like uh, after you subscribe to the channel. So, okay. If you need help in the program, help is one basically one keyboard click away. Help contents or F1. So if you just click on the F1 key, which I'll do right now, you're going to be seeing the online help file. And uh, the best part of the online file is you can click on the link. So it's kind of like a bit like a web page. You can click on the links if you need to as well. Uh, contact us page. You've got a lot of links to Facebook page and website and whatnot. So okay. Okay, the main display in the program. Now, in the upper left here, we've got an important window, and this is um, uh, depending on which tab you have selected, collections, stamp manage catalog, or view by. It's going to, uh, in, in this particular instance, it's going to show you all the collections you defined. Now, you notice here I've defined two collections Dad's collection, which contains, um, as you can see at the bottom here, the status bar, eight items, and my collection, which contains 14 items, including one first day cover. Um, now the sold stamps folder. Every time you sell a stamp, and by I mean, by what I mean by sell a stamp is, let's say you edit a stamp, and in an additional information tab, you um, change the, anything in the selling information. Like for example, you change the date sold or sold to selling price. The program is going to consider the program the stamp sold and move it to the sold stamps folder, which means you don't own it anymore. So in a, if you're running reports. Uh, uh, unless you specifically tell it the reporting to do so. For example, if you right mouse click on the sold stamps folder, uh, those sold stamps and any stamps in the, your want list are not going to appear in reports because you basically don't own them, so they shouldn't be in the report. Uh, the want list uh, just shows you stamps, as as the name implies, in your want list. If, when you, if, let's say you have a stamp in your want list and you need later go on and inventory that stamp, uh, the program's going to check and if it the the stamp you enter is in your want list, it gets removed automatically. So deleted stamps, when you delete a stamp, it doesn't get deleted immediately from the program. So I delete this stamp. It gets put in the deleted stamps folder. Now to actually get rid of the, the all the stamps permanently, and be careful before you do this, you're going to select actions, empty deleted stamps folder. Uh, you can rescue this stamp, let's say you deleted it in error, you can move it back in the program. You just select it, move it back into my collection. It gets put back in there. Editing stamps. Uh, to edit a stamp, you can just double click on a stamp, edit the information, change the picture if you want to. Uh, one of the new features we have here is a webcam feature. So um, I think you can set up a webcam so that um, 
I wouldn't be surprised if there's devices out there to make it easy to uh, webcam, get a webcam image of a stamp uh, instead of ha having to hold it with your hand. I believe there's probably some devices out there to make it easy to just put the stamp under the webcam and uh, inventory it that way. Uh, I'll check that out. So uh, uh, the attachments tab. Now let's say you've got a receipt or a certificate associated with a stamp. You can attach it to each image. I'm sorry, to each record. If you want to make changes for uh, several stamps at a time, uh, what you can do is let's select four stamps now. I held, I held down the shift key, which uh, basically when you hold down a shift key, you select the first stamp, then you go to the second stamp, hold down the shift key, click on the last stamp in the range. It's going to select all the stamps in between. That makes it much easier to select the range. Uh, control key, and this this pertains to any list of stamps in the program. If you hold down the control key, you can cherry pick the stamps you want to operate on. So uh, I selected those ones. Um, now if I right mouse, mouse click now, let me see if, you, see if you can see that, and select properties, it's going to um, allow you to make changes for all four selected stamps at a time. Now uh, these are the fields you can change, the date bought, date sold, graded by, current location, etc. We've got a lot of videos already on reporting, so I'm not going to go over that uh, in this video. But um, if you want to get a printout of what you're seeing on the screen with my collection, if you want to get a printout of that, just click on the print or control P uh, on your keyboard. Just click on that. And what that does is it basically um, populates the fields to print with all the fields you actually see in, in your window. And you can arrange those if you want. And it uh, allows you to just do a quick out print print output of what you're actually looking at on the screen so I'm gonna click print pre preview there button um, here you've got all options you can not only can you print it out the printer you can preview before you print see if it looks like you want uh, out output to Adobe Excel it etc so let's click preview for now now in the 2016 edition the preview has been improved um, uh, we we uh, include a report designer, which has been improved quite a bit over the past year. Uh, it includes several new features, conditional formatting. It makes it's easier to actually build reports by just simply dragging the fields you want to see in the report. Uh, I've got we'll do another video on that separately. It's a more advanced subject, but anyway, so you can print preview and print out the stamp uh, the list of stamps here, and it's the same. Um, same uh, feature set that's used in reporting is also used in this print uh, section or print feature here as well. So I'll close that. To sort, now it may not be obvious if for a beginner, but uh, to sort in a column is as simple as clicking on that column. We've actually, about once every couple of weeks, we get a customer asking, How do you sort by Scott number? All my stamps are, you know, not in. Uh, continuous Scott number format so all you do is click on it so if you, this is, and like I said this pertains to any list of stamps you see in the program if you want to sort on a particular column you just click on the column header if you want to reserve re reverse the sort so let's say you want to see the higher Scott numbers first you just click on it again and this little icon here shows you what direction it's currently in Okay, I'll go over in a couple other features very quickly. Uh, let's say you want to clone a stamp in. Let's say you've got two of Scott number 193 and the second one is in different condition or perhaps uh, uh, there's a, you bought it from somebody else. You want to just uh, add additional or different information. All you do is click on it. Click here on the clone. And that creates a second copy with the exact same attributes. Uh, beauty of this is you can go ahead and uh, edit the second one and make the changes you need. For example, let's say this is a used copy in very fine condition. You just make that change. Searching for stamps. Uh, there's two types of searches. You can search within the stamps you inventory. That's all the stamps here. Or you, could, or you can uh, search in the stamp database, which is a predefined database of 315,000 stamp varieties, which we have input into the program. Uh, to search for something that's currently in your collection, you're just going to click here. And so, for example, you want to see all your stamps from, uh, let's say, 1920 to 1923. Search, and it's going to show you all those stamps that you've currently inventoried between those years. Now, there's also a stamp database search, which is uh, different as it 
does a search over the entire predefined 315,000 stamp database. And the way you do that is you're just going to use stamp identifier. So same concept here. You can choose which countries you want to uh, search on. Um, and you can search all the text fields or in particular field for some bit of information. So uh, now previously we were looking at collections. This is the stamp manage catalog and uh, what this does is it um, shows the entire stamp manage database and you can view the database by different uh, different uh, fields for example year of issue, issue location, perforation. Uh, down here we've got a view by and what that does is it takes all the stamps in your inventory and uh, groups them by certain fields. So for example let's say you want to look at all your inventory stamps by year. You're going to click on view by expand year. And what it does is it um, searches your entire inventory and finds every year that you've inventoried, year of issue you've inventoried and presents it here and then you can just click on the ones you want to look at. So you want to look at all the stamps from 1924 that in your in your inventory, just click on that. 1932 that works like that. So Okay, well that's it for now. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to be doing much more detailed video videos on individual parts of the program. And um, thanks for watching. Take care and bye bye.